Hello, folks. It's Real Honesty with Jordan Ritland. I'm Jordan Ritland. That. I'm Cassie. That. Kyle. Okay. And NXT Takeover Orlando Impact Zone review. Kidding. It's the or it, there were people here, so it was obviously not the Impact Zone. And Josh Matthews didn't make me want to, you know, rot out my ears and my eyes. Chris went poop. Um, what? Chris went poop. Yeah, that's why Kyle's here. Um, Kyle is a new Chris. Is that like orange is a new black? Yes. Orange is a new cat black. Yeah. Um, Charlie, wow, Charlie looked really damn good. And Billy and Peyton, I mean, I want to see them team up with Emma in ways that I cannot talk about on here. So, the main show. Um, Triple H has a cool narration. Talking about, hey, NXT has really evolved. Sure it has, Hunter. Sure it has. Um, it actually has. It's really nice they're getting to play in front of big crowds. Um, if only Impact could do that in Orlando, but they can't even draw more than 400 people in the Impact Zone. Oh, and by the way, the sound stage is between 900 and 1,200 capacity. I'm just wow. picturing them drawing stand-up people, like 400 stand-up people. <laughs> I mean, they would have to spend money to do that. That probably wouldn't be a good idea. Anyway... New titles. Cool. I like it, even if they're all the same. Um, whatever. They're making, like, gender equality because everybody gets to be the same. Not uh, in his world. I like the... In his world or my world? Your world. Well, they shut up and listen. It won't be a problem. You just want to stick them all in the kitchen. Well, yeah, that's where they belong. I'm talking, by the way, about cooks and chefs, just so, just so we're clear. Sure I would, you are. Hey, hey, hey. I run a clean show where I never make any sexist or racist oh, jokes. Shit. No swearing. <laughs> the fuck? Anyway. Um, <coughs> so so what do you think of the new titles? I love them. Okay. Oh, so, they're nice enough. Yeah. I I'm, love gender equality. Um, why would why would you love that? Anyway, so um cool. Because you don't. I have to. I, I mean, look, gender equality is fine. We'll move on with that. Sanity with Nikki Cross, uh, Alexander, you know, hungry like the wolf, Killian Dane. For the love of God, get Dane a goddamn shirt. No one wants to see that. And EY, who did not need KY for this match, versus Ty Dillinger, Ruby Riot, aka Heidi Lovelace, um, you know, on the Indies. Yeah, Riot Ruby. <laughs> he had one job. She hadn't watched that much NXT lately. Anyway. Roderick Strong and Cassius Ono, both of him. So he matched up with uh, Killian Dane just fine. Seriously, Cassius, have you never heard of a treadmill, for the love of God? I honestly would have preferred him over Reigns <clears throat> in the Shield. That would Punk would have so also. Better. Yeah, Punk would have also. Moving on from that, I enjoyed this. You know, No Way Jose was taken out before the, uh, before the whole match happened. I enjoyed the match for what it was. It was really thrown together. Like, Dillinger Strong... And Jose had been feuding with Sandy for a while, and they needed a woman in there, and that's why Ruby Riot came in there. Um, I would be down to see a Nikki Cross versus Ruby Riot uh, feud down the line. It'd be fun. I mean, they need more feuds than just over the title in the women's division. Mm -hmm. So it was fine. It was a fine opener, and the crowd was pretty hot for it. What do you think? I think I've got a cat. Cassie, what do you think of the goddamn match? I think it was probably one of the best matches of the night. Okay, there were five matches, Cassie. You really didn't have much to measure up to. You, you thought it was one of the better matches of the night? Yeah, which Kyle? is sad because it was thrown together. It was thrown together. Kyle, what did you think of the match? Uh, I thought it could have been a lot better, but, you know, for an opener, it was pretty good. Yeah, indeed. Cassius, seriously, Cassius hit the goddamn treadmill. Good Lord. Um, He's a good wrestler, but God, it's like he's wearing that skin-tight jersey. They took two, They took two jerseys and sewed them together. At least the FBI didn't need to find him. Right. What? You Who? didn't hear about that? What? Tom Brady hired the FBI to find his jersey. Agents Mulder and Scully, FBI. <laughs> anyway, um, whatever. So, Andrade <laughs> Cien Almas versus Alistair Black. Such Black, much Alistair. Uh, decent. Nigel, of course, said during or I believe after this match, it's like, you know, here on Ring of Honor, uh, Nigel, Nigel, I mean, I know you were in Ring of Honor for a while. Kyle's spinning back here. <laughs> Andrade was fine. Alistair Black, a.k.a. Tommy End on the um, Indies. It was fine for what it was, but it ended kind of abruptly. It's like he kicked him in and he's done. And okay. Cool. I mean, it was a blackout kick, I guess. What do you think, Cassie? I think it could have been more serious. You should be ashamed <laughs> of yourself for that one. Kyle, what do you think? Uh, I actually just like this match. It just was not up to standard. Okay. To standard of what, Kyle? Of Raw. Wow, that's... That's wow. a low standard. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. Well, maybe it's because you weren't too familiar with these guys. That, 
Yeah, yeah. That yeah, might have been it. They're good workers. I mean, Andrade catching himself in the ropes on the fence. Um, Alistair Black, though, I think had a good show, and it was fine. Especially considering they literally just threw the match together. So, now we get to the Authors of Pain. The Authors of Botch. Authors of Pain, Masters of Botch. The Revival. I used to like them, too. And they look cool. They have a cool... They have a cool theme about them. They ha they're cool monsters. Paul Ellering lends a lot to them. They are a two-year project. They remind me of multiple death strokes. What? <laughs> death strokes? What? DC. I, I know. What? DC Comics. Um, I showed you the picture. You kind of... Why would, why would there be two Slade Wilsons? Are you okay, Cassie? Because they had the mask on. Moving on from that, they reminded me of Matanza from... Um, Matanza or even Mil Mortis from Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. Vampiro. Awesome. Um, so, it was fine. It it had its moments where it actually had a really good pace. They were given a long time to tell a story. The problem is, is the eliminations made no sense. Authors of Pain winning didn't bother me. Because I felt that they were going to win. But okay, they beat DIY, which took the crowd out of the match a lot. The table was broken. Wonderful! But what um, were they supposed to do if Revival moves up so? How was that supposed to go? My my point is, is kind of the way they did the eliminations was a little rushed, but they were given enough time. I guess my problem is, Author Japan clearly learned the botching when they were in Kali's training school. And I don't know how long they were in there. I mean, the fact that Greg Kali has a wrestling school is ridiculous. Their entrance is a lot faster than Kali's was. Hank Hill walks better than Great Collie. <laughs> and neither of them have uh, full legs. So, I liked it. DIY got eliminated, then Revival got eliminated. So, Authors of Pain, Masters of Botch, yep. Retained. <laughs> delete chance during the match. Delete, that was fine. Delete. Delete. <laughs> I don't care. I've seen both ways. Moving on from that obvious <laughs> joke. Um, I enjoyed it. I will say, you know, I said 8 out of 10, but I'm sorry. I meant to say 7.5 out of 10 for this reason. I didn't have a problem with Authors of Pain retaining. I had a problem with the kind of the way they did the finishes. It seemed like they were like, okay, oh, we're going to do this, all these moves, and let's sell for the Authors of Pain, and we're done. It kind of just fell flat. What do you think? I would agree with you. It seemed like they were lagging purposefully to get them keep the match going. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Authors of Pain are, like I said, they're a two-year project. Kyle, what do you think? Um, what you said about two-year project actually sounds pretty accurate. It just feels like they're not done. It needs a lot more build. Well, I mean, they... See, the shame, the shame of it all is that uh, you can't have another monster team go against them. I mean, there is that heavy machinery team that just debuted in NXT. Um... <laughs> I mean, but they're just two fat guys. I mean, they're talented, but they are two fat well, guys. Well, they're also getting to the point in NXT where they're going to have to bring in a bunch of new guys to refill the roster. Oh, they got guys on in the performance center they can bring up. They're they just shouldn't... trained. Yes, they just shouldn't bring them up too soon, like the Authors of Pain. Um, <coughs> who are... They They will grow into those characters. They are young guys. Well, didn't they bring Authors of Pain up right after the draft when they were really low on guys? Um... The, Wait, you mean from, you mean in NXT? Yeah, yeah that's kind of right. That's I think what, that's kind of why they brought them up, because they were really low on guys at the time. They had a whole bunch of people move up to the main a roster. A whole bunch, like seven people. <laughs> Much, guys, such wow. <laughs> Even Marie approved. <laughs> anyway, so, no, I agree with what you're saying. Maybe they rushed them too soon. But I still, I liked the match for what it was, but some of it fell flat to me. Still, I did like how hot the crowd was. It was nice to hear the lead chance, and everybody gave a solid effort, even if the authors' pain still seem unsure of what they're supposed to do. So, anyway, we're going to move on from that. Oscar versus Ember Moon. This was a match that did not go the way I expected it to go. Um, honestly, I mean, it was a good match. It was well wrestled, but it kind of ended as quickly as the Mickey James Oscar match, where boom, and okay, cool, it ended. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Oh, damn it. I can't do the Krillin voice like Chris can. You will hear that on the WrestleMania 33 review oh, tomorrow. Damn oh, damn it. Oh, damn God damn it, Napa. I don't <laughs> see why you would have Oscar win. Um, here's my thing. Besides Ember Moon, who else are you going to have? Nikki Cross isn't ready. No. Ruby Riot just came came on. Ha, 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 ha. I wish. 
Ready or not, here I come. Ha ha! I wish. Anyway, so you got a lot of women. Peyton and Billy had the characters down, but not the wrestling ability. There's some good women talent, despite Mandy Rose being there. And Liv Morgan is basically Carmella 2.0, but she's fine for what she is. But what does that have to do with Oscar? Oscar? Because you might put one well. good wrestler. You can't really, right, pretty much. Ember Moon's about the only one that can get close to her level. Asuka cheating makes some sense. If they don't really have a role for Asuka on the main roster, and they want to wait till the draft in a couple months, because the draft's supposed to happen possibly in May or June, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um... But, and, and, you know, you got to give Billy Kay and Peyton Royce something to do. So you could have, you know, her and Ember and, you know, live feud. You could have more of that kind of stuff. You could have some good feuds happen. And Asuka going heel, that's good. Because you really went about as far as you could with her as a face. Her pushing the ref into Ember. Ember hitting the mat. I didn't see her. And then all of a sudden, you know, Asuka gets the win. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Ember with her Assassin's Creed hood. Baron the Assassin's Creed hood. Um, What? You had a name for... I had a lot of names. What, the Grey Wolf? I don't remember what I called her. Um. Anyway, I I enjoyed it, but the ending seemed kind of rushed. And Asuka winning, I get it, but it seemed weird. C Cassie, what do you say? I would agree. It was really shocked me that they had Asuka win. Agreed. Kyle? Weird, but honestly, the best wrestling match of the night. Actually yeah. felt, I actually felt like this one had stakes, unlike... The last match that we're about to talk about. Oh, the stakes are high. And they're rare. No, yeah, no, I agree, Kyle. I, I agree with what you're saying. Medium so, rare. So, my opinion, the most interesting match of the night. He is the most interesting man in the world. Stay thirsty, my friends. What? <laughs> Having a stroke all of a sudden. Drew McIntyre, happy to see him back. Um, He got out of Dixieland and Anthem Sportsland before, you know, he got swallowed up there. Cool. I don't know if he's going to make an appearance or if, he, if he's going to be back in NXT or if they just brought him there and they they're, they haven't signed him to something yet. I don't know. If he comes back, cool. Hopefully they use him right because Drew is a hell of a talent. Yeah. Great talent. Um, and his girlfriend isn't there to uh, screw him up. Well, his ex-girlfriend. Uh, two beauties playing the piano for uh, Rude's entrance. That was cool. I like the redhead. Shocking. I know. Um, I wonder what other, what other she could tickle besides the ivory. So, Nakamura had a cool entrance, despite the Venetian blind, uh, you know, pants in the end. I feel like last year was better. Last year what? Like, when he was riding on the cart to the ring. <laughs> oh! <laughs> they just, like, had a crowd circling a little bit in the dark. Yes, you were. Yeah, it's a Japanese rave, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> it was, oh, Rude had, it, Rude had, right, yeah, Rude had a cool entrance. It was a good match. It was much submission, such wow. Um, and I'm using that joke a lot. Uh, yes, Doge. St still, like it, every joke you have. St still, it was, I never overused jokes. Still, I know, I know it's a meme. No, well, it's not a joke to me. It's different. But it was a good match, but my problem is it felt like their NXT Sa TakeOver San Antonio match. Where it felt like it drug on way too long. Their chemistry's good. Their chemistry's not great. This did not justify having another rematch. Sorry. Yeah. It just didn't. Put Nakamura on the main roster. I don't care. Have him interfere in the Seth Rollins Triple H match or have him show up on SmackDown. Yeah. Have it, have Shane get beat up backstage. But don't have him interfere in the Raw stuff. No. Please, no. No. Have Shane get injured tomorrow. Have Nakamura face Shane. Or face <laughs> Osiris. <laughs> That actually sounds like a really good idea. Injured man. I will beat up injured man. Um, what do you think though? What do you think of that? I think that the uh, thing with the bell was kind of a cheap escape. But it didn't work. Like a Ford Escape, like a nineteen ninety five Ford Escape. It's like a let me be done. The hell did rude and sound like a sixty year old? I can't man. make it rude. I can't make it rude. Can't be rude, so I agree, the bell thing was ridiculous. I mean, Nakamura losing didn't bother me, but I'm like, okay, the match seemed like they kind of drug on. Wait, what's the finish? I don't know. Ah, get the bell. It's fine. Anyway, so it it was good. It was fine. It wasn't great. No, Rude winning, though, was fine with me. What do you think? It wasn't a good match. It wasn't a bad match. It was just a match. No, Reigns was not in this, so it was better than that. <laughs> uh, that's it was fine. better than that. <clears throat> yes, go ahead, Kyle. What do you think? Um... Honestly, the ending felt a little off. It's like, 
it would make more sense for Rude to be DQ'd or counted out in this, so so Nakamura can move up to the main roster on a high note, but not winning. But not like getting the almost, title again. Yeah, what? It kind of seems like they almost broke script a little bit. It, Did you say broke? Marvelous! What? It just feels like they broke the script. Did you say broke? <laughs> Delightful! They derailed off script is what you're trying to say. Yes. But I don't Well, actually, they needed more training. <laughs> it didn't feel like they did. I just think that's how they wanted to end. Probably. So, I'm sorry. I'm going to give TakeOver Orlando a B-. minus. It had its moments. The talents gave solid efforts. The crowd had some energy. I think a lot of the crowd thought they were in an Orlando Magic game, and that's why they were depressed. And they were confused. They're not used to seeing championships defended. That was the problem. What? No, Kyle's uh, face right there. Ah, uh, <laughs> that actually comes to a blind. Jeez. Anyway, you're all right over there, Kyle. Yeah. Okay. That face. So, great, Cassie. What's great for the event? I'm probably going to give it a C plus. C plus, Kyle. I was going to say C plus, but just for how much the talent is doing, B minus. Yeah. B minus. I mean, it wasn't a bad show. It just it what did it measure up to other NXT takeovers? No. Anyway, than the most Raws. Well, yeah, I, I think we could put on a show. My dog can shit, and it would be better than most Raws. <laughs> Breaking news dogs can shit, according to Cassie. Anyway, do you agree, disagree, like, share, comment, subscribe, Twitter disagree. links, and whatever the hell in the description. Real honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin. That. Cassie. That. God. Oh, Bring the hate. Um, to who? And we'll be back for uh, WrestleMania 33, whatever the hell it is tomorrow.